Okay, so we have just about wrapped up rotation. The last thing for us to talk about is a little bit more with energy. Okay, and we're going to start with work. Okay, so remember that with force, work is the integral of F dx. Well, in the case of rotation, work is equal to the integral of torque with respect to angular displacement. Okay. Um, work can also be found if you have a constant force by multiplying F times X. Okay. For work, for a constant torque, it would be equal to the torque times the angular displacement. Okay. <clears throat> and so you have units of newtons times meters, and then when you multiply it by the number of radians, then those meters become um, parallel somehow and turn back into energy. So the newton meters become joules. Um, and then finally, uh, we can talk about power. So for for when we talk about linear measurements or translational motion, um, power is the change in work over time or just the work over time or for instantaneous power the force times velocity in the case of rotation power again is the chain the work done I guess we want to do the delta for these divided by the time for average power or the torque times the angular velocity for instantaneous power okay um, and so these this is used like when you when they talk about like how powerful a car is for example they might use this is I think where that comes into play when you um, they talk about torque in commercial like car commercials you'll hear about them talk about torque and power and that's where this kind of comes into play so anyway um, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about this or really this. The reason we're bringing up energy is because when we do conservation of energy we have to account now for rotational kinetic energy. Okay so we're gonna do one last problem. Um, this is a conservation of energy one. We have this odd shaped system that when released from rest is gonna rotate about this axis and kinda fall down like this. Okay, and what we want to do is find out how fast it's going when it reaches the bottom at this lowest point. Okay, and the way that we're going to have to do that is using conservation of energy. Based on our center of mass here, that center of mass is going to drop to a lower position, causing the gravitational potential energy to decrease, causing, and that energy is going to go into rotational kinetic energy. Okay, but before we do that, we need to find the moment of inertia before we can even talk about rotational potential energy. <clears throat> and so what we're going to do here, we have two shapes. We have this hoop and we have the rod. And so we're going to have to combine their moment of inertias. So I of the hoop plus I of the rod. Okay, this rod, by the way, has a length of L. And that L is equal to 2 times R. We'll use that for this. Soup has radius r. Also, notice that the center of mass of this rod has a height of 2r. Okay, since this is not rotating about its axis, we're going to have to use the parallel axis theorem. Okay, so let's start with the hoop. All right, if the hoop was rotating about its center like this, it would be mr squared. It's not, so let's look at our table. And it's going to look like this. So a hoop about any diameter is going to be one half m r squared. Okay. So for the hoop, it's going to be one half m r squared. Okay. For the rod, we know that a rod is one twelfth m l squared. Okay. But because it's off center, we have to account for parallel axis theorem, so I say plus m, and that h is going to be that distance to r. Okay. Alright, so I just made a quick little mistake there. The squared should be outside here. Okay, and then remember that l, which is the length of this rod, is also 2r. Okay, so 
we have one half mr squared. This becomes one twelfth times m times two r squared. Then here two r squared there is going to become four r squared m. Okay, or let's let's write it like that. Let's write it for m r squared. Okay, which means that this right here would also be four r squared. So we get one half m r squared one twelfth times the four is going to be uh, one third m r squared, and then we have the four m r squared. Okay. So before we add all these together it's easy to kind of lose track of where we are just in this whole mess. This is the moment of inertia of the hoop about this diameter, rotating about that diameter. This is the moment of inertia of the rod if it was rotating about its center of mass. It's not, so we add to it the parallel axis theorem mh squared to account for the fact that it's off center. So these two represent the rod, this represents the hoop, we add this piece in because the rod is not rotating about its center of mass. Okay, so one half plus one third plus four, um, three sixths plus two sixths is going to be five sixths. So that's four and five sixths mr squared for i. Okay, so we've completed the first part in finding the moment of inertia. All right, the next piece now would be to calculate the angular speed when inverted. So basically what's happening here, we have some amount of gravitational potential energy and it's being transferred into rotational kinetic energy at the bottom. Okay, so that means that we go from mgh to one half i omega squared. I we just solved for here. Omega we want to find. We know what m is. We know what g is. We need to find h. That's going to be basically the distance it falls. Okay? And the distance the center of mass falls. So we need to find the center of mass. Okay? This has a mass of m. This has a mass of m. Its center is located at, we'll call this point zero. This one's located at 1, 2r. So for the rod we'll say m times 2r. For the disc we'll say m times 0 and we'll divide by the total mass m plus m. So they both have the same mass so it's why it looks like that. So we get 2mr over 2m giving us a starting height of 1r. So if we start here at positive r, we go down here to negative r, that's a total distance that it falls of 2r. And so that's what we're going to put right here is 2r. Okay? So we're going to say m times g times 2r equals 1 half times 4 and 5 sixths. Let's actually do this. Let's convert. Let's simplify it. So 4.83 mr squared times omega squared. Okay? The m is going to cancel out. These are the same m. One of these r's will cancel out. We'll multiply up the 2 and divide by the 4.83. So we get 2 times 2 is 4g over 4.83. 83, okay, and we also have one r, so we'll put the r right here, equals omega squared, we take the square root, so omega equals the square root of 4g over 4.83, and the r is 0.15 meters, okay, that was given to us right here. So we simplify that and that will tell us how fast it's going when it falls down here and reaches that lower position. Alright, and we end up with about 7.4 radians per second. Okay, so we converted 
our gravitational potential energy into rotational kinetic energy ended up with 7.4 radians per second okay and and this is a pretty high level problem and this is about as advanced as we get for now with the rotation okay